For more on the markets now, I want to bring in Jeffrey Kleintop. He's chief market strategist at Charles Schwab. Uh, Jeffrey, good to see you here. So um, before we really dig in, I just want your thoughts on this milestone we reached today. You know, oftentimes we talk about these record highs sort of just being numbers that they're nice round numbers that investors can can glom onto and they make for good headlines. But what what is so notable about this particular milestone during this particular time in our history? Well, this November rally in cyclicals is certainly showing up in the Dow. I mean, this is an index that historically have been, co- been composed of companies that make things, right? Like Boeing or Caterpillar or 3M, just to name a few. So uh, to see the, the, the further rally here in cyclicals, despite the second round of, of lockdowns around the world and, and the rising virus count, is encouraging and, and telling us the markets are really looking to a broader cyclical recovery in 2021. Also, I have to think that a tailwind here is the fact that Janet Yellen is going to be the next Treasury Secretary. um, Is she seen to you, you think, as the most market friendly pick and the most dovish of the picks out there? I think so. This is a person that the market knows well. There won't be this this awkward period of the market and the new uh, Treasury Secretary trying to get in, get to know each other in terms of the language. This is already well known. Uh, obviously, uh, she's obviously uh, you know quite well respected. Heck, even I think Trump noted that she did a good job as Fed chair and was only replacing her to put a Republican uh, in the role of Fed chairman. So if you've got Trump's endorsement, wow, this is a person that certainly appeals to, uh, quite a, a broad uh, a broad number. Of folks across the political spectrum, and certainly the important uh, coordination between the Treasury and the Fed, as we've seen lately with Mnuchin and Powell being at odds over funding for some of the programs, is going to be really important as we move into 2021. And so obviously, there'll be quite uh, quite a bit of close dialogue and, and comfortable uh, familiarity between Yellen and Powell. I want to uh, go through the day's economic reports quickly, because I think they paint sort of a contradictory picture of the economic recovery. You've got home prices seeing their biggest spike in six years in September. That's according to uh, the Case-Shiller Index as this pandemic has a lot of people looking to put equity into their homes, right? At the same time, you've got consumer confidence over at the conference board slipping. So where do you see things in Q1 um, with, you know, of course, the hope that these vaccines are going to be in the backdrop. Do you see this recovery gaining steam and momentum as we head into 2020? I do uh, acknowledging that we don't we're not quite through this this surge in in the virus cases yet we've seen some progress on these lockdowns and improved restrictions but there's still this this bridge until we get those vaccines approved uh, produced and, and distributed that we could get, have some some push and pull. Uh, certainly, the December economic data will be quite a bit weaker than what we've been used to seeing lately. Hopefully, it'll be transitory. But when we look at consumer confidence, you know, it's interesting if you break down that index between current current situation. And future expectations, actually, the current situation improved. People feeling good about their current situation, a little more worried about the future. That's the component that fell. But remember, this survey was taken just ahead of the election. So maybe a little bit of election worries creeping into the consumer sentiment there that maybe hopefully won't be showing up in their actual purchasing behavior. Now, you were also predicting, I was reading through your notes, that you said you expect a a near-term economic double dip. Uh, for the global economy. What do you think is going to cause that? Is, Is it going to be the fact that we're having this rise in infections around the world? Yeah, I think it's these lockdowns. So, you know, we're, we're in the middle of one uh, in France here in November. We're seeing some in the UK and in Spain. We've seen <clears throat> a number of, of selective and, and uh, short-term lockdowns in Europe. But now we're seeing some states embrace that too. Michigan, uh, one that's in a three-week lockdown. So the consequence of that is, yes, probably a dip in some measures of, of economic activity. We're starting to see that in some of the high-frequency indicators, even, unfortunately, some areas that were just starting to crawl out, like movie theaters. You know, we had started to see box office numbers come back. They're all shut down now around the world. So those numbers have dropped back to zero again. So, you know, as we started to see a recovery in some of those service sectors, the door was closed again. So I think that's going to make for another soft spot in the economic data, though not as weak as in March and April, where we had schools and churches and manufacturers closed. This is a little bit more of lockdown light, but still likely to lead to another dip in the data. And quickly, tell us where you think the leadership is going to come from next year. Will the U.S. stock market continue to to lead uh, global markets around the world? 
I don't think so. We're, we're looking for better GDP, better economic and earnings growth outside the U.S. for the first time in a long time. Those are the current forecasts from the IMF, but they're lining up with a valuation differential, differences in profit margins and expectations that would suggest to us that international stocks may be the leaders next year, particularly in Europe, where we're seeing a really sharp rebound in earnings and, and economic expectations. That's really important given that those markets haven't led in a very long time, and that's reflected, again, in their very low PEs. You know, when we get to a new global economic cycle, we often see new leadership emerge. And it wouldn't surprise me to see that coming from international stocks this time. All right. Jeffrey Klein, top chief market strategist at Charles Schwab. Thank you. Thanks for having me on.